here with Yanni D. Kamalas after a pin against Drexel. Yanni, we've never talked before. Um, give me a little bit about who you are as a wrestler. Like, what are you a grinding wrestler? Are you a good wrestler? Are you a fun wrestler? What? How do you? Who are you in wrestling together? I'd like to consider myself um, like technical. I'm in. I'm not gonna tell you I'm the best wrestler out there, but I definitely would say if I had to depend on one thing to win me matches, it would be just my ability to like flurry and hit moves and have a variety in my offense because. You know, I'm not strong or faster. You know, maybe like the, like the grittiest wrestler, but so I try and depend on like skill as much as I can. Yeah. How old are you when you started wrestling? Um, I started when I was five, but like I didn't really start like practicing regularly until I was six years old. But yeah, pretty young. And did you like it at that point, or is it just family member? It was like my dad got me into wrestling. He wrestles um, from like middle school on, and uh -huh. it was just kind of like. You know, my dad thought it was super important for me to wrestle. Did he wrestle? Yep, he wrestled okay. all through middle school, high school, college. Okay. He was a coach at RIT for a little bit. Okay. And he thought that there was a lot of like, um, like good experience and like good um, learning to come right. from wrestling. So he's like, you're gonna try this, you know, a year, or two or three, and I feel like you keep doing it. And um, I really liked it. I was a really competitive little kid, and it was just like fun because like, uh, it was entirely dependent on you. So there was no like other guy to mess it up, and if you messed it up, it was your fault. And if you won, it was all you winning. And I just liked the individualism of it when I was a kid. When did you start taking it a little more seriously? Uh, like you know, maybe ten years old, like fifth, sixth grade. I remember my dad. It was kind of funny to say that as like a little kid, but yeah. it's like, all right, hey, like we can start taking it seriously, and you you might be good, or like you can just keep doing it, and you'll be like okay. You know what I mean? Uh huh. And I was like, well, I want to be good, so we'll take it seriously. And then I started, you know, getting, like, good practices, traveling more, going to, like, tougher, like, youth tournaments and stuff. Uh -huh. But it was just kind of like a conscious decision, like, all right, we're going to start taking this seriously, like, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Got it. And did what you liked about it evolve over the years, or is it still just that personal thing? For me, it's now it's gotten to the point where it's just, like, I love it so much. I love everything about it, and it's, like... It's like a part of me. Like I can't, I literally can't imagine life without it. Like I want to, you know, go through school and graduate and like get into coaching and like, like it's my whole life. I just, I love everything about it at this point. It's like, uh, it's just like I've lived, I've lived through it so much, and it's, it's honestly, it's gotten me to Cornell. It's, totally, pretty it's, good. It's totally, it's totally made me the person I am, and I, it's just I can't even put like one thing that I love about it anymore. I just, everything's just everything. Um, we spent a week in the practice room watching you. What would we see? Like, what kind of practice wrestler are you, and how do you approach the sport in the room? Um, you know, I take it pretty seriously. Uh, my coach, Mike Gray, he's all about, you know, working hard and trying to push yourself. And he's saying every day you need one mental challenge, something where you're like, I got this done today. Maybe you're saying I'm going to accomplish by learning this move. I'm going to get myself this tired where I can't stand up. I'm going to overcome this, you know, conditioning, or I'm going to do this extra sprint. And um, hopefully, <laughs> you'd find a kid who's working hard and trying to develop his technique. And um, you know, I have great teammates who are going to push me and make me better. I have great coaches who are going to give me the knowledge to improve. And it's really, I have every opportunity to be good, mm -hmm. and it's up to me to just push myself to that level where I can be successful. So. I don't know if I answered your question. But. That's good. Um, very successful at the high school level. Freshman, top of, t near the top of the rankings. What is the fire that drives you? It's just... Because, I mean, yeah. D1 wrestling is no joke, yeah. especially being at the top. I mean, you've got a fire of some drive yeah. that is very rare. It's just like, I mean, I obviously have you know freestyle goals also. Yeah. But it's like... Ever since you're a little kid, you're like, man, I want to win nationals every year. And it's like one of those things you say as a little kid, and you're like, oh, but like it's so out of reach that you don't even really consider it. But now I'm here, and you're like, man, I can do this. Sir. Yeah. It's right in front of me. And at least in my opinion, if I don't win this year, it's because I didn't work enough. Uh -huh. I didn't give enough up, or I didn't put enough into it because... I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I think I have like the skills and the ability to, be, to win a national title. So it's all up to me to just put that work in and you know get a little lucky come March, hopefully. So I'm gonna feed off of that. 
have, having that kind of goal, tell me a little bit about mental resiliency because there are setbacks. And how do you deal with a setback uh, in pursuit of perfection or of being the best? Yeah, big one for me this year is the Jay Nyman match. Yeah, didn't totally, want to name it, but... <laughs> totally gave that away. Um, I mean, I'm up 5-3 with riding time. 90% of the time, you should say, match over. You give him a takedown, you still win. But uh, I found a way to lose that one. And, um... Why or how? Was it think, mental? Dove at his feet. Just, but was it, was it a mental breakdown? Did you not know the situation? I was totally aware of everything. You it were? It was just a, a lapse of focus that can't happen anymore. Okay. And, um... So were you thinking, like, about laundry or a girlfriend? Nothing. I'm kidding. I'm just messing around. Mine was totally empty. <laughs> empty. Okay. That's one thing I, I'd, I'd like to say I do a pretty good job of is when I'm out there, I don't so, hear anything. I don't think anything. It's just like, okay, this is what's going on. Yeah. But that was a mental lapse, and I, I, to, I gave that one away, and I can't, I can't do that. That's the kind of stuff that'll cost you when it's important. So how do you forgive yourself, or whatever the vocabulary is that you yeah. use to get past that? You know, it took some time, but you just gotta think. You can't let it just bother you like that, because that's not gonna accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. If anything, it would hurt you by just being like, oh, like, what well, was me, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So you just gotta think and move on and be like, you know, all right, this happened, but I gotta get better if this doesn't happen again. I gotta wrestle those situations where I'm up by a point with, a minute to go and the guys coming at me super hard and I can hold position. I gotta get better at my offense where maybe that's a maybe that's an eight three lead. He can take me down four times. I'll still be still whatever. You know what I mean? Where it's just I mean it's tough but you gotta have a growth mentality and my coaches help me a lot with that. They're like, dude, can't can't dwell on what happened, can't change what happened. It's all about getting better, improving what you've done and every every day coming in and being like, Alright, I'm accomplishing this. And you kind of use that as, like, you're talking about the fire that drives yeah. you. You use that because, like, you hate that feeling. You don't ever want to experience that. Right. And it's like, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to not feel like that. There's a difference between losing and giving a match away. If a guy's better than me and he beats me, you got to get better. But yeah. you give a match away like that, like, that's all here. And you just got to use that as a driving force to not let that happen. Are your goals all written down or are they just in your brain? I mean, I don't, I'm not like, I don't do the thing Kyle did where he wrote his notebook every day, but I think about it all the time. Not even just NCAA, it's just everything. I think about, you know, the international wrestling. I think about winning nationals. I think about wrestling senior level. I think about getting better at wrestling because it is what I'm doing. Yeah. It's just like, it's constantly on my mind. And I'm constantly thinking about how I can better myself and, you know, how I can develop. So, I mean, it's not written down. I, I don't do the thing that thing, but... <laughs> I mean, I, I'm definitely thinking about it a lot. How often do you share those goals with people? I don't believe you talk about that stuff. No? Okay. I, um, you can talk about it with your coaches, you can talk yeah. about it with your like, sure, sure. teammates, but I think it's... I mean, you have to accountability partners or yeah. something, right? Teammates and coaches. I, yeah, like the people who you're close with. Yeah. But I think... I know you want to be a national champion and a world champion, yeah. but you have other goals along that way, I think right? it's... um. can't think of the right word for it. I don't, I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm telling people I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that because yeah. I think that makes me come off arrogant Yeah. and it's just me talking about myself and I don't need to do that. If I'm if I'm saying, like people ask me, like, oh, like, you think you're going to win nationals this year? I'll be like, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. But I think it's unfair to the guys you're wrestling and and it's um probably a little, a little too much boasting to say, yeah, I'm winning nationals yeah. this year. Some people see it as confidence, I see it as just like, um, maybe a little arrogance, but that's just, I don't want to be that guy. No, I, I find your style very compelling. I have for a couple of years since I've been watching you. Do you have favorite wrestlers that you watch and you try to emulate some of those moves, or is it just all you? It changes all the time. Honestly, that's how I grew up, though, was like watching wrestling and being like, man, that was great. Like, you take a dude, I remember Mavla Batirov had like this beautiful elbow pull, knee pull. Uh -huh. And when I was like 10, my dad's like, dude, you gotta watch this. <laughs> And it, I'm like, this is amazing. I want, to be, I want to be able to do that. And it's like, all right, we're going to start working on it, breaking down that technique and learning. And after a while, you start making it your own. You start being like, oh, I can go elbow tie, high crotch, too. And right. You start developing from there. But you know, I can't say I've consistently had one favorite wrestler. But just growing up, you watch guys. You go through phases. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, I'm going to learn a lot from this guy. Then you get older, man, I'm going to learn a lot from this guy now. And you keep growing, man, I'm going to learn a lot from this guy. And now it's gotten to the point where 
it's like, all right, coach, you know, you gotta, like my, that's one thing they've been working on with me is, I need to start taking a role and being like, okay, I need to work on this. This isn't working for me, I, what, what should I do? I think I need to work on this, I think I should do this, because it'll make me better. Because, you know, I'm starting to get to that age where I'm not a little kid anymore, I gotta start like being um, independent. Yeah. And like, obviously I'm always gonna depend on my coaches and my teammates, but sometimes I can come to them and be like, hey, what do you think of me working on this? And they'll be like, I think that's a good idea, or I think that's a bad idea, you should try this. And uh, I think that's how you develop. Do you ever have fantasies like, if I could wrestle anybody, regardless of age and weight, <laughs> Like, like I want to wrestle Jordan Burroughs or Gable or... I've always thought about, like, man, like, it'd be so cool to get that feel, like... Like, man, I'd love to feel Jordan Burroughs just doubling me in the chest as hard as he can. <laughs> or, like, you watch guys and you're like, man, that's so good, like, I want to feel that. I yeah. can't tell you one specific guy or thing, but, like, you'll see a dude, like, I'm talking about that knee pull. Yeah. You're like, man, he hits out of everybody. Right, I want to feel that. Right, yeah, right. You're, like, you're talking about Burroughs doubling. Man, I want to feel that. Like, Smith's listening. Everybody like, knows it's coming, but yeah. what's that feel like? like? I want to feel that. Like, yeah. why does it work so well? Because I think that's another way you grow, is you're, you get exposed to those feels and you're like, man, okay, so this is what makes him so successful. How can I adopt that? Without giving away any secrets, we're talking about feeling it from an all-time great. What's it like to feel wrestling you? Um, I've been told I present a really awkward feel. Yeah. And um, because of the mixed pressures, I can't. I can't tell you why, to be honest. I, I mean, go it's something them. I've been developing since I was a little kid. Where my dad's always wanted me to be offensive in a way where maybe it's not super physically imposing, like I'm clubbing yeah. him, but it's emotionally stressing. Where you're like, oh, he's coming this way and that yeah, way, you or the he's mixed pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like you change it up, but um, I can't tell you what it feels like to wrestle me because I, I'm me. Yeah, but sure. I've been told I give like a weird feel, so yeah. I guess that's a thing. People are off guard uh, or off balance when they're wrestling you. Last question, let you get out of here. It's getting late, cut some more weight. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with cutting weight. Um, I mean, I've definitely cut weight in my life, but I'm definitely not the biggest 41 pounder out there. Yeah. And um, I think I'm in a good spot with my weight where you know, I'm still cutting weight, I'm still dieting really well, I'm cutting weight that last day, but it's never gonna affect, it, not that much. it shouldn't ever affect my wrestling, and if it does, it's because I didn't do the right things. So I like where I'm at with my weight, you know, I'm not cutting a ton of weight, so maybe I'm not the biggest guy out there, but at the same time, I'm big enough, I'm feeling great down to weight, so I think it's, I'm in a good spot with my weight. I lied, one more question. That's Tell fine. me a little bit about the, the vibe on the Cornell team this year. We're honestly really close with each other. The young a, team? Yeah, really young team. A lot of people who like, like, you know, come in here, you know some guys, but you don't really know them. You right. just meet them, you know, on recruiting visits or you sure. come to practice and work out with them. And it's like, man, the more time I spend with these guys, the more I like them. <laughs> and, um, you know, the coaches have really been pushing, like, this team mentality, like, we need to make each other grow. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of young guys, so, like, you got guys like me, Darmstadt, Max, like, even Chaz Tucker's, like, a freshman. And, mm -hmm. Like, we're all, like, I live with Darmstadt and, like, Freddie Stroker. You know, like, we're all super tight with each other, and it's like, you guys need to make each other grow. So you as and Freddie get on yourself. each other's shoulders to look him in the face? Yeah, we like, hey, hey Ben, how you doing? It's, it's like, yeah, dude, he's so tall. <laughs> he's a big guy. He's a big guy. Um, all right. Anything else you want to say with the Cornell fans or wrestling fans or your family? I mean, you know, I'm just thankful for the opportunities I've been given, and, you know, hopefully I have that great support system that I've had my whole life forever and um, I'm just thankful to have the opportunities I have so yeah thanks for the time no problem have a good night